Okay, it's half past. I'm keen to start this meeting on time, so if everybody could take their seats, please. I'll just wait a minute for Kate to come back. Okay, well, welcome to the Staffordshire Local Government Association the Joint Waste Management Board. Uh, my name is Jonathan Price. I'm the chair for this meeting. Do we have any apologies, Liam? Uh, thank you, Chair. I've received apologies from Carl Edwards, Dave Haywood, Justin Johnson, Trevor Johnson, and Nigel Harris. Okay, thank you. On to item two, the minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of January 2022. Uh, do I take it as read? Do I have a proposal for those? And a seconder, please. Thank you, Lem. Are there any matters arising from the minutes? Are we happy with the updated terms of reference? Okay, I'll take it as moved. Uh, on to item five, the summary progress report, and that's the report of the Waste Partnership Manager. And over to you, Kate. Thank you. I'll just find it on my screen. So you should have in front of you the usual spreadsheet. Um, we have now just done uh, quarter three. Um, I've kept the entire previous year in there as well so you can see trends obviously we're coming out of covid by this point um, and covid did obviously affect um, waste but by q3 things are starting to look um, just a little bit more normal shall we say um, so that's helpful um, any questions on any of the data oh, lovely thank you uh, thank you, Kay. On to item number six, the resources and waste strategy update. And I believe that's over to the Waste Services Manager of Newcastle and Lyme Borough Council, Andrew. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, not a massive amount to, to update. Um, although um, a few weeks ago, we did at least get um, uh, the results released of the consultation for the extended producer responsibility um, part of uh, roars, which was, was helpful, and a little bit of insight into what they were uh, proposing to do for deposit return schemes. So, um, so just quickly to update you on that. Um, so it is effectively confirmed that full net costs will be paid to uh, local authorities um, for uh, extended producer responsibility for packaging that are in scope. Um, by uh, April 2024, and that's basically for household collections. So that's, um, in effect, our um, dry recycling curbside collections and also an element of uh, residual waste collections where obviously packaging material is still evident in that waste stream. Um, I'm not 100% sure um, about packaging waste on household waste sites so um, I believe that should be in but um, it's it, it's it's not not very clear at this point um, the bit that is missing or has been deferred is the business waste so any effectively collections that we make as local authorities to uh, businesses um, for packaging materials are out of scope and I think that's because effectively it was proving too complicated and they need government needs some more time to properly think it through there was quite a lot of backlash uh, particularly from private sector waste companies um, over over business waste and it is a, a far more complex um, situation than we have with with householders not not least in the fact that the the data that is available on uh, packaging materials within business waste is, is extremely poor 
um, in comparison to um, household waste data where we've all been filling waste data flow in for the past 15 years or so and actually the figures are, are very accurate. So there's some positive news there, as I say, that at least um, we, we do know that uh, we will be getting EPR payments. Um, it's proposed that they'll be paid quarterly, so we've actually got a, a little bit more uh, meat on the bones. Um, they'll be paid quarterly in arrears um, based on the data for the same quarter of the previous year. So actually Kay's point that she's just made when she was going through the performance data, um, actually the previous year's data is what will be used um, to, to sort of pay um, within the year that you've, you've got. Um, and there'll be a scheme administrator that will be set up, a national scheme administrator set up to basically process those payments. Um, and that looks like now that it will be a public body. Um, so there was some debate, I think, about whether it could be a, um, a non-profit making um, company. Um, but I think uh, government have, have taken legal advice now and it's got to be a, a public body um, that will be taking that responsibility on. Um, probably of interest as well, there was, um, we, we've not really spoken about this at this board meeting, um, but there was an issue around extended producer responsibility payments for litter and street sweeping. So obviously packaging uh, materials appear in litter. Um, again, there was a lot of backlash from producers who didn't want to pay for littering, they didn't want to be seen to, or didn't think they had to pay for what effectively they termed as an illegal activity in terms of people dropping packaging materials on the floor for us to sweep them up. Um, but they accepted that packaging materials placed in litter bins uh, was a legitimate uh, route for disposal and therefore were happy to pay for that. Clearly government have listened to that and effectively we will get paid for packaging materials that we empty out of litter bins, but not that that we sweep off the road, or at least not in England. Uh, I believe in Wales it's, it's going to be somewhat different. Um, they're also going to uh, fund communications um, to reduce littering, so there's going to be quite a, um, a big push on, uh, on that side of things. Um, uh, and as I say, uh, in England and Northern Ireland, we're only looking at litter bins, but in Scotland and Wales, um, sweeping li of litter is included. So obviously an awful lot of consistency there not, which was half of the intention really of the recycling and waste strategy. Um, the other one is to note is that plastic film recycling, um, which is a, a material that effectively has no um, secure outlets at the moment is, is, is not particularly uh, widely recycled because of that. Um, it will become a requirement for us to collect it by March 2027 um, and that will be for households and businesses. And then lastly on deposit return schemes um, they have gone in for what they call an all-in DRS so um, rather than an on-the-go DRS. So the on-the-go DRS was particularly focused just on litter um, the all-in means that it's, as it says, really, it's all-in. Um, but again, in England and Northern Ireland, it will just be for plastic bottles and metal cans, drinks cans. Um, glass will not, or dra glass bottles will not be included. But in Wales and Scotland, they will. Um, now, the reason glass hasn't been included in England and, and uh, Northern Ireland is that... Um, um, the safety implications in reverse vending machines that will be located at supermarkets they don't think will be able to cope with glass. I think anybody that's been in the industry long enough would know that it, they won't be able to cope with glass. So quite why uh, Scotland and Wales have gone for it is, is quite interesting. Um, again, there's been quite a lot of backlash in industry about that because of the fear is that most um, certainly soft drinks producers will probably swap from cans and um, plastic bottles to, to glass bottles um, and I know Keep Britain Tidy are extremely concerned about that because obviously glass poses a greater risk uh, in terms of, of littering so um, one to watch there um, but at least we've got some insight into, uh, into what's happening. 
Um, in terms of the other consultations, effectively, we haven't got a date yet for when uh, the full impact of deposit return schemes are known or the consistency in collections, which is the, the key bit for us here today. Um, we haven't got a date for uh, the results of those to be released, um, but it will be sometime after the, the May elections, we hope. So happy to take any questions, Chair. Uh, just one quick one from myself. It's probably a daft question. I'm sure you'll be able to answer it. Why would they go from cans to glass, bearing in mind the cost of producing glass, particularly through energy, is quite substantial? So I think the fear is because they will have to pay into um, a fund effectively to um, recoup the deposit. So um, they'll have to pay into that for extended producer responsibility anyway, but they will also have to pay into a, a fund for DRS. And by swapping to glass effectively, they won't have to pay into that fund. Well, that's, that's the fear, but you, you're quite right, Chair, uh, that um, there are other implications in terms of the weight of glass and transport costs and all of that. So it'll be, it'll be very interesting to see. Um, but this apparently happened in Germany a number of years ago and effectively killed the, the can industry practically overnight so it'll be it'll be one to be uh, to be watched thanks thank you does anybody have any questions for andrew okay thank you for that report so item seven uh, is the date time and venue of the next meeting which is to be arranged uh june 2022 uh, therefore i'll go on to item eight which is exclusion of the public uh, and I move that the public to be excluded from the meeting for the following items of business, which involve the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in the paragraphs of Schedule 12A, as amended, the Local Government Act 1972, as indicated below.